Hello and welcome to A Town Called Bastard. This is him, Neil, and we are playing Crusader Kings 2 Conclave, which is the latest expansion for Crusader Kings 2. It came out today, uh, well, today as I'm recording it, which is the 2nd of February. It adds a variety of different uh, mechanics for sort of inter-realm management, really, is the best way of putting it. Um, increases the um, the nature of the council, adds several other relatively controversial features such as uh, coalitions and infamy but we'll go into more detail of that as we go in now originally I was considering playing in a continuation of the last game of the well, second to last game uh, that I did on the channel which was a Carling restoration where I started in France and um, ascended to become a king the king of uh, Andalusia or Castile I can't even remember anymore and um, that, that was going to be a quite a good way of continuing things in an area we, we all knew and loved but as lots of the mechanics to do with this game, the new expansion are related to being a vassal as much as they are a liege I decided to start on a slightly different date I cast my eyes around the map and I was quite tempted to start in the Holy Ren Empire at first uh, or even the Byzantine Empire in its own way um, but I'm hoping to try and convince the other people who um, contribute to this fair channel to do a mu multiplayer of Holy Roman Empire, as I think that would be fascinating with a bunch of us there. So I decided to delay that one. So instead, I'm going to take us to the far future, well, the far future for Crusader Kings 2 at least, in 1204, or potentially. No, 1204 is a good start date. It's um, quite different. It's the Latin Empire start date, which has appeared in history not many people really that familiar with. I wasn't that familiar until I um, played Crusader Kings 2. And we're going to play in England, um, which is obviously a place I know well, but it's it's not one I've seen too often except for some William the Conqueror starts and the like. Specifically, we're going to play uh, Duke William of York. Now, in reality, Duke William de, Fer I think it's de Ferreras de Ferrer, uh, wasn't actually Duke of York, York. He was Earl of Derby. But he ruled this kind of area. Although if I'm, it's a pity in some respects that um, the de Percy family um, aren't represented. Yes, thank you very much. Um, the, who later became sort of earls of Richmond and dukes of Northumberland much later on, as they're quite fascinating in their own way. But this is a it's a quite a nice start. Now, as per the um, horse lords setup, we get these wonderful introductions now when we start as a character. Um, this, as far as I can tell, hasn't really changed since uh, Horse Laws and the accompanying patch, so I'm not going to discuss it much, but it's nice to, I think compared to how it once was when you started Crusader Kings 2, that you get this full list of all of the features broken down by your culture, your government and your religion. Pretty standard stuff these days. Now, um, this is where I sit within York. I believe they've added some extra features of um, the, of uh, how to do things, so I think this was particularly even the more one of the last patches, but there's various different ways of seeing map modes they've added, um, but we'll get into that a bit later. But here you can see a good breakdown. Um, as you can see, York, or Darg I suppose it should be more properly be. This is my territory here, and the rest of England is quite patchwork. Um, with only a few powerful vassals, and I chose this partly because I wanted to make sure we were a powerful vassal in the game so we could see the conclave features. Um, other bits that I'll just quickly point out uh, when we start, the um, finno ugric cultures have gained their own set of face packs, um, so these sort of cultures over here. Um, they're quite nice, a bit a bit grey, a bit like the Turkish portraits and some of the Russian portraits of recent times. They're another nice change. And also, for people who had uh, Paradox accounts, there's also South Indian portraits which have been added. Um, so this portrait as opposed to sort of these portraits to represent sort of ethnic differences. Which makes sense, given how large the Indus subcontinent is. It's weird to have the same portraits for all of it. Um, so it's just another interesting change. Now, into the meat of things. So the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is um, look at these the pop-ups we have. 
So the first one is this children lacking a childhood focus. One of the changes they've done in, um, in Conclave is that you pick a focus for your child in a similar manner as you did for Way of Life, um, giving you focuses for you. And there's also these childhood specific traits. Um, my son, William de Ferreira, who would be William the Third. Oh no, I'm William the Third. Ooh. Well, in reality, I believe actually this character was second Earl of Derby. Um, let me see, does it count? No, it doesn't. This is my regnal name. Yes, he was actually second Earl of Derby and not uh, third Duke of York under the name William. But let's ignore that. So my son will be Duke William the Fourth of York in game. Now he's got these special childhood only traits, uh, affectionate and playful. And these all interact with these focuses that I can pick. You, So, um, in fact, these are given by these focuses. I think all childhood characters now just have these randomly generated traits. Um, so he currently has affectionate and playful, which comes from uh, humility, etiquette, and such like. Now there's a whole different set of these which come up with different traits, and these traits then lead on to how you interact with educations later on, which we'll hopefully get to in a bit. But for the meantime, I just want to see he, what I would like to lead to, I suppose. I am um, I have an intrigue focus, I'm a bit of a diplomat, and given my state of things around here, either diploma diplomacy or intrigue would be fair cops. Given that I went quite intrigue heavy in... Um, in my last game with the Carlings, I'm going to go for a bit more of a diplomacy feel. So, in keeping with that, let's go for etiquette with playful, I suppose. Um, timid, affectionate. Actually, I might go for humility and just see if I can get a third childhood trait and sort of get more options as I go on. So that's his focus done. Whilst I'm looking at him, I'll, I might as well arrange a marriage. Um, see who I can get to. See if there's anyone interesting in the set of who I can marry to. I seem to remember at this time there's quite a nice match we made here because assuming he dies soon, his daughter is going to inherit. So I'm going to try and marry off to her. Would prefer a match linear marriage. Now this is another thing that they've um, apparently they've increased the, the strength of the desire for match linear marriages recently. In the latest patch, so they're not going to let me marry them. Um, marry a second daughter, that's not quite enough. I think I'll just leave it for now and hope they die and see if things change. Um, because it would be quite nice. Interestingly, the um, this Earl David of Northampton is a member of the Dunkeld dynasty, who are the ruling dynasty of Scotland. Um, and they were, well, for quite some time, I suppose, is the best way of looking at it. Um, so he's currently the brother of the King of Scotland. Well, good for them, I suppose. Um, but it would be quite a nice family to marry into, generally. I'd, I'd be able to take that land, I'd be able to get an ally of the King of Scotland if I need to. England, at this time period, obviously, has quite a big lot of control um, over Ireland, um, and southern Wales, and indeed over England, because uh, over France, sorry, because it's... Uh, the Plantagenets, Plantagenets, always pronounce it wrong. The Plantagenets, um, who were named, who were originally Dukes of Aquitaine, um, who um, gained, uh, who inherited the Kingdom of England. In fact, my character, uh, Earl William of York, was the favourite of King John. Um, I believe there was quite a lot of uh, political manoeuvring going on, and they were, or at least they were friendly in one way or another. Um, I believe is how this person even gained his his uh, earldom, but I could be wrong. Now, they've also added this ambition: acquire title, so I can if if I if I can uh, aspire to gain a title. I think you can even ask to be given a title at that point. I'm not a member of the council. That's interesting. Well, I'll look at look at that in a moment. Um, again, I'm going to try to go to diplomacy, so I'll go cruising which allows me to invite people to cruise, increase my diplomacy and so on. So my intrigue is atrocious, even though I'm educated. I'm slothful, one of the worst traits. And I'm craven, one of the other worst traits. Wow. Slothful, craven, envious and honest. Yikes. Well, 
Craven and Slothful are two of the worst traits. And I've got both of them. Wonderful. Um, exalted amongst men. Could go for Exalted because it, the only advantage of going Exalted early on is you can't pick it later. I might gain quite a bit of prestige if I'm lucky. Let's go for that and hope. Um, yes, let's go for that. Later press it to your claim and link and I want. Okay, let's go to the meat of things. So this is the council screen, accessible here. This screen looks fairly similar to what I'm used to, but you'll notice that each of these four characters have this brownish fist, gloved fist, which suggests they're a powerful vassal and they expect to be on the council. Now, I'm actually going to replace one of these because he's a rubbish chancellor, Baron Thomas of Richmond. Is he a member of the Percy family? No, he's of Richmond. He should maybe he should be a diversity. Anyway. I'm going to place him with this bishop, because he's got better diplomacy. When I do that, you see that he changes to a red fist, because he's angry about not being on the, on the council. And he gains this minus 30 once seat on council modifier, um, which is bad, but I feel that given his relative power, um, I'm probably safe. I don't think vassals really rebel, so mainly it's just going to give me a tax hit. So I'll give him a title to offset that. But another change you can see is that all these opinion bonuses are far less than they used to be. So these used to be plus 10 opinion bonuses for Master of the Horse, um, High Almoner, and then it used to be, I think, plus 15 for Cupbearer and 15 for Regent. This is much less. I'm going to give him a title anyway to offset a bit of it, but it's nowhere near as strong as it used to be. It's designed to make vassals much more uppity. Um, I think that's the only change I'm likely to make at the moment. I don't know the way this interface skips back and forth doesn't really need to overlap on a screen like this, but never mind. Um, so, he's not a good enough Chancellor to fabricate a claim on a duchy, otherwise I'll try and claim this petty kingdom of Gwened. I might go for Durham though. Or... something of that ilk. The Shrewsbury where... the Shrewsbury's ally to me. Um, nope, I will um, I'll go to Durham for now. It's a bishop, but at least I can get it under my control. I'll generate levies, it's always good. Taxes. Now, there's a favour system which I'll, I'll talk about later, but this doesn't seem to have integrated in any way with this spying stuff. But I kind of hope it will be, but I'll investigate that later. Let's see. Happens. I'm going to get try to make the bishop in York a better. To get my minor titles in one view, which is an increase improvement of the previous mechanics. Now this is the, as I said, more of the meat of the stuff. This is my council. So this is all the positions listed on this page, my council members. Um, there are also three other empty spots. I would gain another slot of an, just an advisor. Um, that would be a person without any real specific council job, but they would get on here and have a vote if I was a king, and then another one as an emperor, and this final slot is for a regent if I had one. Now all of these symbols indicate their positions. They could be a loyalist, which means they pretty much vote for everything that I want. Pragmatists who vote for increasing their own power and for the realms. Um, glory hounds who want war, but war against powerful people, they don't just want to be picking on people. Um, as long as it increases their power. Zealots, who have a religious goal. And malcontents, who just vote against everything. Um, so as you can see, I have two glory hounds, three glory hounds, sorry, and um, two zealots. Which is good, I have no malcontents. The, this, uh, the, these are important because it means that when I want to change laws, I have to get their approval on things. Um, and rather than making them vote on every single position, particularly for players, it means you can just set a general opinion and um, everything goes along with it. Um, if you go against them they become discontented, uh, currently they're content. Um, the downsides of being discontent is that they can join ca factions, because they can't join factions anymore if they're on the council and content. And also that I can only enforce realm peace um, if they're content. Realm peace replaces the old um, crown law preventing vassals from fighting with each other. Instead every um, 10 years or so I can just force all wars in the kingdom to stop, basically, after a short amount of time. I'm slightly on the fence of how that works. Um, 
I think the old system had flaws because it got really boring in late game so you couldn't advance. But this might also be a bit weird. But we'll see how it goes. Finally, my liege council, just as I have a council, my liege has one. I was hoping to be on the council, given that I believe I am a powerful vassal. I'm in fact the third most powerful vassal. Um, with a significant amount of levies. So I am probably discontented. I am. There we go. I want to sit in the council, minus 30. Um, so I imagine I will be given a piece in the council at some point soon. But as you can see, whereas I have no malcontents, um, my liege has three malcontents. And as you can see, um, he has that advisor from just a powerful vassal, um, presumably powerful vassal, who wants a space without really having a council position. This interface, I believe, is moddable. It will scroll if you add the position ability to have more councillors than just eight. So I imagine things like Game of Thrones mod especially will focus on that. This is revamped laws tab. It looks a lot prettier. Um, it's fundamentally the same information here. A uh, bit of a name. Um, now I can see two more pretenders. Um, this is much more interesting. I have some of the old laws like centralization. But then there's the new status of women law allows you to set certain um, female positions, allow them to hold um, offices and um, eventually change to absolute cognatic. The AI will basically never use it. Revocation, which is like the old crown law stuff, only um, split to different law. And administration, which is now basically governed succession laws, which means you don't need to get high crown authority for primogeniture. It was a rather peculiar gaming system before where I almost wanted my leaves to get high crown authority so that I could get primogeniture and then drop it down to low as fast as possible again so that I could war within the realm. So all that kind of weird gaminess is gone. Importantly, I think I need late feudal uh, laws in order to... Yes, I need late or imperial administration in order to um, gain primogeniture or there needs to be high or absolute crown law. I believe that last bit, this high or absolute crown authority, is a holdover for those who don't have the DLC, so I'm going to ignore that, especially as it says one of these must be true. So I'm just going to try and go for late administration, so that I can try and get primogeniture as soon as possible, because I'm currently in uh, Galvakind, Galvakind. So there you see my um, supporters will vote in it. I don't really know how they're going to vote in it at the moment. Um, Let's see. In some respects, I probably should have waited to see how the chips fall before inviting them all. I might request that they do as I want so I can make sure I get this administration passed. As I don't think there's going to be any real favour they're going to need from me in the near future. And I only need two of them to accept because I'll be a tiebreaker, presumably. So who do I care least if. Right, let's request a favour from him. And him. Oh no, he's a bishop and I can improve it. He likes me, so. him. There we go. So now that should get two of them to vote for me and do what I want, if I understand it correctly. Which I may not, it has been, I have not played it in Conclave yet. This is Obligations tab. This is basically just levy law versus tax law. You now have to focus on them rather than just giving them, upping them on both. Um, nothing too special. Finally, my council. This covers lots of what laws to do with what things my council can vote on and what they can't. The only thing that I have um, complete control over at the moment is uh, rule of banishment. Everything else I have to get a council to agree or else they'll become discontented. Similarly, for the royal laws, you can see all, all their things, which is quite nice. You can probably break out all their laws differently. Uh, there's these sort of remaining crown laws of investiture and realm inheritance. Um, annoyingly, on this interface, it looks like I should be able to click on these, but I can't. Because it, this is already slightly confusing and apparently it's getting fixed in uh, the next patch, 2.5.2. Uh, that I can't... It says the council is allowed to initiate voting for this type of law. That's not actually true. Instead, I have to call a favour and get the king to call a vote on it. It's a bit confusing. Um, because, as I said, it's highlighted, but hopefully that'll be getting changed. Now, I, are we nearly ready for unpausing? I think we are ready for unpausing. I'll just appoint some successors and unpause. Yeah, ooh, ooh, yikes, these people are rubbish. 
the lightning. Scarcely. And there we go. In the meantime, let's also get my brothers married off people. Ha! So they voted for me. Hopefully, excellent, yes. So I should be able to pass that law now. Yes, that should pass, I'd have thought. Good. Um, who can I get a marriage with? Is there anyone useful dotted around here? There we go. So I should be able to make primogeniture later on. I'll make lots of marriages with lots of more distant people. Marrying with France might be useful in the long run, just in case. Let's get a marriage with... Yeah, France. France will do, just in case I want to make an alliance later. There we go. Crusade, excellent. And is anyone within England who I might want to go to I don't really intend to go to war with England anytime soon. But she won't inherit. She's a bastard. So it's probably not too helpful. I will see how the chips fall if I go too far on that. However, what I will do is join this crusade. Um, mainly for the gaminess of the crusader trait. So in that sense, it's almost a nice thing that I'm not um, in the council because otherwise I'd be restricted. Now I've just noticed something very interesting um, when I mouse over my character there. Apparently I am the heir to the Kingdom of England. Now I find that terribly unlikely because it is primogeniture and he has a son of his... Oh, he's a bastard. Is there are really no more people who are eligible. I would have thought he should be eligible. He's a bastard too. Well, I had not realised this. Um, I suspect in real life if he died there would have been a bit more of a dispute rather than just going to a powerful vassal. Um, but I'm expecting he's going to try and legitimise his bastard pretty damn quickly. And of course get a wife with his... Uh, get a wife? Get a son with his wife, the Countess of Angoumé. Over there in southern France. And a jihad for Sicily. As always happens when you start on later start dates. There's a crusade and a jihad and it all goes in that way. Now, I could fight for Lincoln. Get a jour to expand my realm a bit. Although I, I'm at my max of my domain cap because I voted to um, increase my... to get steps towards primogeniture rather than increase my domain. Now, can I invite anyone to cruising? No, I'm at war. Well, I'll have to wait for this war to end. In the meantime, let's see if there's anything interesting going on. Um, again, show, I suppose showing the start date, which not many people play out. Sicily has already formed. The Almohads, I believe, were kind of provincial governors, stroke tr um, local tribal leaders who overthrew the Almoravids. I think it was the Almoravids. Yeah, the Almoravids. They themselves over the Idrisids of. Um, Southern Alandros and uh, Mauritania. Mm, I don't want to become humble because I'm trying to be exalted, so nope. And there's the Masufids over here, the Ayubids, um, all descended from um, Salah al Din Yusuf ibn Lahad. Wait, no, that's Altair, isn't it? Salah al Din Yusuf ibn, ibn Ayub, maybe? Yes, that sounds more likely than a computer game character. Much more likely. Hence the Ayuva dynasty. Uh, let's land in the Holy Land. As you see, that sort of government of um, Egypt and Syria um, is quite powerful. The Abbasids have a bit of independence in this start date. Ooh, I've got a strong claim. Well, I better press this at some point. Good. Excellent. <laughs> My prestige has dropped quite drastically. Um, Let's go for Warwick next, I suppose. Let's turn up for the books. And um, I'm just going to run around here trying to get um, the Crusader. Uh, take it from Marshall. Crusader for you, Crusader for me, Crusader for everyone. Um, Sultanate of Room is still about this start date, although I believe, although it will shatter in a few hundred years. Excellent. And now Crusader, I can now 
stop putting myself at great danger. Let's make up a crusader. They'll like me more from a crusader. It's always nice. Um, so the Latin Empire formed from the Fourth Crusade is still alive just. Um, with the Comnenos, oh sorry, the Lascarius, Lascaris, um, Byzantines, nipping at their heels. Ah, and Jerusalem, did that just have a, no it didn't. Didn't realise Cyprus has split off at this start date. Oh, if I... Yeah, he did. He just died. Excellent. So, Jerusalem and Cyprus split. Well, that's not helpful for anyone. I think I'm going to go home now with my troops. So, if they do win a crusade for Jerusalem, there'll be a nice um, war, I'm sure, between the kings of Jerusalem and Cyprus. I, I should mention, actually, yes, the king of Cyprus. Um, that was separate for some time, and then they intermarried um, in the Delusignans. Um, claim both. And then of course there's the... What we've got here of the of the Byzantine Empire, it, it is... I think it was historically called now the Despotate of Nikea. Ooh, zealous. My beloved wife is bored and keeps talking about new fashion. I think vanity is a sin so that we can become zealous. But zealous is a fantastic trait and it might offset um, my terrible traits. So this is the Despotate of Nikea. We go like here. What? Well, I just got you powerful. Play a weak physique. Weak physique, Marshall. Dreadful. Oh, and you're the best I've got. Fine. I need to get a new commando as well. A little rubbish. Have to do. Um, so that was this area. Uh, then there was the Empire of Trebizond. And there's also the. Uh, I think we call it now the Despotate of Epirus. Comnenos Dukas family. Uh, it was this area that eventually became, that reclaimed uh, Constantinople, declared themselves empire, emperors again under the Comnenos dynasty. And because there's no real good mechanics for reinstating an empire or anything, I think they just left as emperors just to make things more consistent. But it would be nice. Ooh, a tithe. Excellent. If there was some Translatio Imperii mechanics. And I'm kind of hoping that um, the success of this DLC, assuming it's successful, suggests that they can make, if it says paradox is, that they can make money without having to do big packs that sort of make new um, factions available. They just expand features generally. There we go, here's another focus I can choose for my daughter. Uh, you can be raised in... Let's go with etiquette. Let's have another etiquette written child. Now, has the Earl of Northumberland, Northampton, died yet? No, he's still there. Still want to marry this person to my son. Yes, a caravan can come in, I suppose. The leader, a jovial man of massive girth. Please me in a straight accent to give front them shelter. Well, there you go. And he is sitting by the fire and regaling me with tales. And he's telling me of the mystical, mythical realm of Hindustan. I don't know if you still... And now they're giving me a eunuch. Great. I believe until... It might even still be the case. Oh, he's useless. Mm. Um, you could get the mystical realms of Hindustan whilst in the east. And even sort of here-ish. And you really should know about India. And here's the um, great Gurid Empire. And the Mamluk, oh, Mamluks? Okay, Mamluks alternate. Oh, terrible. Doesn't even want a new toy. And he's ill. I hope my son's not ill. Um, this is quite a powerful state over here. But they're vassal sultanates. I don't like the use of the term sultanate in these contexts. Um, I don't know if it's accurate. But my understanding is that sultans were kind of revoke the county of Derby that's my county no 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 can't be doing with that
Well, that's not very good. Oh dear. Well, hope that doesn't last. Um, anyway, sultans were uh, sort of ostensibly representatives of the caliphs. Um, there should probably be something like, like, I don't know, it just emirs or something. Anyway, I believe that this autosave is now a good time to stop the episode. We've done a brief introduction, not gone much into the meat of it. Um, but we'll see more of that next time and hopefully I'll finally be able to get this. This man will die and I'll marry his daughter and... Ooh, we've got wonderful types like Erudite. Wonderful. Anyway, we'll see that all next time. Bye everyone!